Hello everyone. Welcome here. Uh, I want to welcome uh, Jerry Benoit. I met Jerry Benoit recently at uh, the opening of uh, Arlington, the Perfection Presenting from Adam Hodge. I found a uh, presentation. Uh, I met him, young man introduced me to Jerry and said, he from us too. <laughs> The native brother Islander. So, thank you for coming. And um, Denmark, please introduce uh, Jim. Can you stay here or there again? Should I go? Yeah, there's no mic. Thank you. Twelve years ago, we had a vision to get to join Shiva as an opportunity, a priority at a time, voluntary, but we still had willing to accept this, willing to show why again. So really want to introduce to topic really big on this campus. You all read what the bell was on file by now probably even big and small I would like to say we will accomplish color in our relationship by it and also really Visualization data, big data, visualization for patients, the big stuff is very Yeah, something. 
This is my website, and you're welcome to visit it. I'll probably change it. I do all the time. And you're welcome to send me an email. I'd love to get questions. I'd love to look at collaboration. Okay, let's jump right in. Since I didn't know who the audience was going to be, I wanted to have audience uh, samples that would try to speak to everybody. But if you're a data scientist, you would definitely recognize the answer from the court that important. This is the same example of what happens when you have the same data, but you've seen some models and presentations. They look like four different data sets, huh? but they're really not. The other one to show you is LA. I called a friend of mine at LA, right at rush hour last Friday while he was trying to get home, and I went from a nap. So the idea of visual aid in our second slide is not really controversial. Yes, the third example is from the BBC News. I'm always on the BBC News. It changes like once a year, it changes. But you notice how the BBC really can manage the participation. Here you see basking sort of your window, the picture that you have. This is important. They're telling you that they want this digital object shared. They provide the medium to distribute. So the communication can and has to be with that. I can go to the other. The bottom is from last Sunday's Boston Globe with the information graphic and static image. She notes the return of images and quantification in the public eye. All of these come together, but they have their voice. Even in professional work, we see the same thing popping up. The public library. So I have some examples of what libraries later on using deep free this JavaScript library to show you that what you know already is one more step is even so much more possible. Okay, so far, we'll see that loose. Good, because even his holiness likes it. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if it's Photoshop or whatever, but we can do this. Okay, this is what I'm going to talk about today. The introduction is both to me and to the topic. And I'm going to give you an unusual version of literature. It's going to be highly driven by images. But there is an underlying literature that you can give you more detail. Then I want to talk about systems model and information visualization. Here I am on Rutherford. Because computer science folk and IT folk can have very strong, strong ownership of the machine. But equally, Visualization are often put to the article. There is an analog, more in a graphic article, yet we often use Photoshop to code. So there is this blurring that's involved. And I want to emphasize by the end that even though we can cross over, no one means that someone's going to be clicked back to the of everybody. And we think this. These are some examples of how we can apply it. And a quick summary, which I hope will lead to discussion. <coughs> All right, here's some of the problem areas. How <coughs> about integrated view of data, people, and systems lead you in the future of information work? Where the information age, you work in it, kind of makes sense for information work. Many people in library and information science call themselves information professionals and they call this their work information work. But look around. How come the English department not here necessarily might be creating a digital library? That's kind of information work. This is a history department. Rise of digital humanity, the span of which is coming. That's information work. There's no authority to say the voice yet. That's why I think LIS is too scary. What's going to happen with larger, larger volumes of data? I teach most of my students to create a proof of concept. Even if you can't build a data machine, you can still build part of that machine to demonstrate your understanding of the need to express with data in a way someone can understand. Great, you might have 10,000 records, you might have 12 data days, but you may not be scale up to 100 million records. That's the first opportunity to see it. Look at data reduction. So, what kind of work? What kind of patterns have? You will actually be detailed how you do your job. Because you're always doing it partially, you don't know it yet. Okay, one of the assumptions are that you're probably seeing on the ground the idea of data salivization. I started off creating interactive systems that I've been talking to near and For example, how many times maybe not here has a regular stop office of some data, they will office of another set of data. Students can't get into the dorm because that's another system. Yet all of these data could be integrated. An enterprise wide data model that can create a directly makes a lot more sense, computationally like 
the challenge is how you go about decomposing the data that you need to operate. It is a very good mindset, but it works so much better in the end from the documentation you need. This is one of the difficulties we have all the time. Whether it's library records, archival records, museum records, personal records, and they don't have to be. Part of it is, with no disrespect to any administrators, administration and the technical infrastructure don't always allow these activity of data. Partially makes sense when protect machines get the reason the work done. On the other hand, if you cost them 10, 20, 50 times more than you need to get a job done, then that model needs to be changed. I love the example I have from UC Berkeley. I have learned to review applications for a new financial system. The one I rank at number nine ends up becoming a people shop. This is a true story. And to get the job done, the university of California had to hire a whole other company. And that company went bankrupt. They hired all the staff in there. $100,000 plus first half of the loan plus housing. And when that project that hit $35 million mark, there's still no product. Now, when it hit the $45 million mark, is the actual people saw the financial. I don't have $45 million. I don't know if that too. That seems an opportunity for improvement. Here's the main point for the big data people. This is true. Volume, variability, speed of data collection means much more from these guys. Put yourself in the world of medicine. There's something called evidence adaptive aging. Imagine you have medical records tied to patients, to the patients, and you're a nurse, and you're a doctor, or vice versa. Imagine you approach that patient. What is that patient doing from stage two to stage three in this disease? The doctor needs to know new literature for that change. And there might be some different health issues. Related to the top of the patient, the chief of the patient, the top of the Wouldn't it be great if you could even think about who's in the top of it? Wouldn't it be nice if the self adapted patient to figure this out? It's easily done, but the question is doing The issue is, well, how can we scale up the entire hospital? Walk the poison around. I believe, and I don't like to use the word simplified. Those basic anybody who applies for a library job nowadays can read the competency on all the incidental positions, be it a reference desk or a system library or any cataloger. Very often, I see mounting for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PhD, Langford R. Fundamentals just get in the door. If you have the fundamental skills, you can do a lot more than realize. Not just in static web You can do more. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of visualization. Equally, I don't want to say that one off with my one set, but I want to say that I have to get a commonality, you know, waste time, and it's possible to make it integrated without an ignition possibility. Therefore, in my thesis, is that at least opportunities for responsiveness by a race, participation. I'm a big fan of the economy and innovation. I mean, maybe, I'm sure you've all heard of the discovery of innovation. innovation. If you read some Davenport and Steele, you'll see that some want innovation, but they're fearful of the failure that could happen. I can say the study of Harvard University's library system doing innovation. And they gave the 80 20 model. You can work 80 20, 80 percent of your job and 20 percent of creativity. And if you hear this stuff, you wouldn't believe what happened. The management never expected the library staff to be successful. So when they created new products over time, tested it, it worked, no effect. And so they failed. Part of the failure was idea of attention. The IT unit thought, no, no, when we used to work with you, you were librarians. The librarian countered, this is what we do. That is what helps that. That's a very complicated issue, but it shows you opportunity there. Therefore, an ecosystem, and I'll define in just a moment, of creating, sharing, using, and contributing. One thing to create something for the side. What is it? Is it good? Is it put back in the screen? 
A great example is what if you have a great lecture and you're sick or you're going on sabbatical? Wouldn't it be nice if another professor could pick it up and go? Everything whole without recreating the wheel? That's not always possible. It could be. But when you have so much data, how can you get new data? <coughs> what if it were a language and put it outside of language? That's the opportunity to do visualization. Visualization has more generative metaphoric power. You can see the reality of the question can't do things. Okay, here's my lit review. It's my odd lit review. I went across the information science, computer science, librarians, the art, and the digital humanities to try to see doing what? A lot of parallels, a lot of people grasping for a sea conductor, something that will help shape them. So, the neighbor system is a community of living organisms and dead organisms. In a system, this is the main point. Biology is on for the neighbor system. Of the climate change uh, program going right now, that's an ecosystem being studied. Both the values in the air, and yet the ecosystem is very metaphoric because I mean, they look for it. It's just the interplay of people and data, so much so that in computer science, you will recognize a duty that actually calls itself an ecosystem. I'm kind of hoping to see it over here. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm thinking about full check the table and like that, but they're just very modest folk. No. What? Well, I guess they don't have much computer science. They're just very shy. Now, the next two sets of slides are part of the literature, actually, the question that I've done here. I want to show how the certain people will recognize visual metaphor and synthesis from parts of work. This is the thing with waterfall models and systems analysis. I still like the waterfall model. Many people don't, but I do because the way I do it shows that each of the steps are mutually informed. Some people say the waterfall model is very linear. You start here, go to the end. It's very much how some librarians look at a query. If you were query, find the result, you're done. Well, that's not really kind of how it works in real life, unless you do the free publication, find that book. That's a different thing. Because the model, for some people, is not sufficient. Agile computing to come along. Even in this model, you notice there are five identified processes, each of which lead into the next. There's no real place to ingress and expect it from that system. The next one below is the software development life, life cycle. Every CS student, every LS student should be familiar with this example. And the main thing is you identify a local need, design a solution, you implement it, you test it. And, you, and it evolves as it gets on the ground. Notice here there's no documentation and a few other important issues in here. Everybody recognizes the specific nature of these. This last diagram I like because it talks about the specific nature over here. Thus, a little more close to the person here, they're showing the work accomplishment that is involved. This is good. One thing to have a theory, the second thing was, the one thing to think as a theory, another thing, I will go back to for the humanities folk, you'll definitely recognize the idea of the knowledge cycle. Creating data, processing, analyzing, preserving, something very like our archive archives, activities, gaining access. Unlike, I mean, unlike any art, you know that thing. You're going to have to do the kind of other value system. Your science might have access as a value system, but it's, as I was just reading the ACM today, there's ethics involved here too. But the librarian keeps kind of waving the flag on that that we will help preserve the ethical access issues as well as the citizen access. So there's room for everybody. Here's an example for an archivist. This looks like it is something from the archive. This is actually from a company that makes police records management software. If you didn't know that, there are many turning that. It was between four, it was from the archive. You got a very lovely quiet. It's almost like being in class. Oh. Therefore, you're the sense for integration and the sense for some sort of a leading thread. You've always heard about data centric models, system centric models, user centric models. But if you think something down to what is the user centric model, I'm not sure what you say. When I was programming, I love to program, it's my favorite hobby. 
I didn't say I'm creating I'm going to be other people. I mean, it's a lot. So what is there? Well, one of the things is called the greatest expectation. I thought it was interesting. I have it in my bag. I get out for you. Just today, in the ACN, talking about this I thought it was interesting. A couple of years ago, last year, the ACN cover story was Should Computer Science Teams Be Taught Graphic Design? Yes, but that's not, that's not where we stop at. It was very interesting that speaking over somebody else's head that went to play with. Digital humanities folks, I'm going to come back to in a moment, they're really into it. I think the reason digital humanities has arisen is a total failure on the LIS part, perhaps, or a failure about understanding data. It's a parallel development to the rise of informatics. In my sense, and I can give you more literature on that. The informatics grew, for example, in bioinformatics and gene informatics, largely because their data and information weren't easy. The computer was coming out and we well, we'll do it ourselves. Information systems and architectures are difficult to access and store. Again, this is kind of the old mainframe idea of the data, using it to the data you are in the room. But there are models that I can show you right now, I don't have a board, where in the science of the architect, you see downstream variety of data. And in, in a downstream data, you have a database for person. You can integrate local resources. If you have an enterprise data model for those resources, and make them available, building on the skills of the staff. We can do a lot more things to do without challenging the data. The mission critical work is to serve local needs in your respondents. Okay. Proof of concept. How many of you have ever created something or created a digital library and then it just sits there? You met current employer. We have every year a new digital library is created, but they are not in any way. I think it's kind of ironic. You know, pathetic, I think it's a better word. Teach all the resources, ideas, yet students about interoperability and integration, yet not do it well on the job. And the only reason they don't do it on the job is the manager. It's still down, attracting the managers all over the place. On the bottom, I give some examples of the Boston Center, Boston University, Center for Digital Humanities. The even MIT has a hybrid studio. And you may remember that many of these places started off using library records for testing. Texas A&M has an institute for digital humanities. Stanford has digital humanities. I did a study of um, the Ethics Museum and six other institutions to show that while these people thought they were going to do digital project repurposing, I took it from a tech point of view. Eva Huffley showed me how it really was a management and identity issue. I had never thought about it. Finally, Stanford University makes a nice little bridge because not only do they talk the talk, they need digital humanities, they can use the tools. So what I want to end with today is a librarian actually has a tool that is right within your hand, but you just may not have looked at it yet. With some examples. Okay, therefore, I think there's some opportunity. This is an exact quote from Maureen Smart on Maureen Stewart's film, so, Page of Visualization, Intelligence for the Humanities. Take a look at this for the moment. This Vocabulary could come from computer science, could come from librarianship, could come from anybody. If I hadn't told you it was digital humanities, you would have attached your own domain to it. Yanma, I think, would be a good example here because creative literacy, information analysis, and visualization. Everybody on campus, I understand, is testing this kind of stuff. Who, I think, has a more sort of a high, high road on it? Literacy makes me think of the LIS program as an opportunity. Not to dominate another group, but to collaborate with another group. If any of you are Derridians, I'm not. I think Jacques is okay, but that idea of a classic text based pedagogy. We talk about the carrying of the text, being the great phrase. Um, yes, why not? There's a good example in French, by the way. And that's the case where it says eating French. One means you don't have the skills even to participate. The other one means you don't have the knowledge of the effective or social media. It's the same phenomenon here. This is the one I read that right here. Accuracy is essence. That introduces an ethical issue. That introduces the philosophy of information and a number of philosophical mind, mind zones right now. 
and see authoritatively the opportunity to you all the wall. So there is no authoritative voice leading. It could be wrong, but it's an opportunity for the county department, for the LA department, for the GS department, say we can teach all these things in a unified way, to the literate, get committed to ethics, understanding of technology, and in a minute I'll show you how we can do it as a business. It's not just an academic institution. This is a really brutal position, and I'm like, take a student for apologizing to the folk right away. Because it looks like hell, and they want to mislead people. The purpose of this data design is to show the many people saying the query is used by the few screen. And the next goes to a variety of resources, full text, free text, or lecture databases, and they come back to the results and read. It's a very state machine, But really, what if more like this, new things can be created and contributed. And the unit doesn't stop, he or she is still part of the screen. It doesn't really continue the visual metaphor or circle. Exactly. Oh. Okay. 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 Good. This example is indeed a style. The graph is kind of weird. But any of you who have worked in, in the information world will recognize the idea of data being unstructured, semi structured, or highly structured. If you have records, for example, that are in early days, you can ask that how many shoes we sell on Saturday accounts. If you want to ask why we sell shoes on Saturday, you can't answer that question. That's not really a data question. Data mining question, not a data question. If you had a whole bunch of unstructured data, Google, for example, saying yeah. not with all those full stack retrieval engines, you have to parse the data up. That's the world of the team, the information retrieval. You still need some technique for relevancy ranking, framework for retrieval, stopping the selection representation, career representation. Some stuff you need in IR, you need to take it to your site. For example, put in the semi structure Take bar records, for example, or XML records. Then you can take the structure of the XML record. That's informative. That can be informative. You want to go first. What about this one? Then you have a question of behavior. The length of time from the same on page before they go to some other page. And then they can discern maybe something in that page is that that caused the change of action. So from a data point of view, all of the other methods just need someone to get what can we get out of it? Therefore, to conclude this slide, these people here will be affected by larger volumes of unstructured data. This is what leads to the idea of big data. Data isomorphical issues with big data. That's another conversation. Then the issue of concentration and scalability. The ability, how are you going to go up? There's lots of techniques for reduction. A great book on that is Craig. Craig, we made the data um, algorithm to make the retrieval. We'll lay out all of the lessons that are out there. Articulate needs local speed of content. I'm going to give you an example of the Rhyme Library, two examples later on, doing it. The bottom is Curating data information into a very natural. I put information in quotes because the key phrase block of say information retrieval implies you achieve something that is really understandable in the past. Not necessarily true. If you look at the history of retrieval, you see why. Because the original data set has very little linguistic ambiguity in the same call. Using a computer as a counting machine kind of sense. It's a full idea of language analysis. But we're going to metaphor is not helpful for the fish, the primation part. That means the individual is there. That's not what we're trying to do. So, who's going to preserve these data? That's another library function. But we're not getting rid of traditional books, we're just changing the function. Therefore, here's a summary. Yes, there are summaries along the way. Anything? Oh, yes. Therefore, we have a different nature. Two. Any discourse across domains. Three, you can view this as an ecosystem, continuing, generating. And four, there's a visual topology. You all know it, they'll have it. You can avoid it from time to time. Do you know how many ads you see today? How many ads you see today? 100. Do you know the average American? 3,600 visual accounts today. How many of those you really know? Right. 
Here we go. Now, this is an information graph. We all have seen these, like in the Boston Globe. But anybody who's done visualizations will remember the bubbles. One of the first things you play with. Typically, very large data sets and visualizations associated with data mining and text mining. Now, from a popularized version, the reason data mining and text mining came along with the answer question. Same example of data mining questions is what does beer and diapers have to do with the I see the man in the back of the smile. I see the side of the man. Same example is how come beer sales go up on Monday? How come diaper sales go up on Monday? It's a true story. Because you ask how many sales do you make, and not why they are and it turns out a little more investigation, life of those data shows your sales go up on Monday night, Monday night football, and you go to 20 pickups and diapers. Nobody would know to ask that at the third. So that means when you take tons more data, you're going to have a catalog of everything in the product. You're going to have associations that make sense to people, but you'll have associations that don't make sense. So there's a whole list. Computing in general, you don't have that anymore. Here we go. Collapse uh, a whole bunch of literature, two pieces right here. Intersection graphics, static design, using visual language, convey preferred interpretation to another. That is information graphics. They're generally static. Rise, however, comes from like Immigrate Magazine. Remember the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Immigrate Magazine was one of the first ones to see Fox. He was a Macintosh computer. Then came desktop publishing. The whole trend is not this anymore. All the things you need. Uh, then you could produce stuff that was professional without using design. They weren't thinking, you see the template, you could do it. So along the way, though, comes tip library. Over the past 25 years, I've heard people say Java is going to die, PHP is going to die, Python is going to die. I have still been fortunate for them. So computer language has more life than you think. We have materially affected how we do our jobs. Along with visualization, again, another apology in a way to the QF folks, but there's a limit to some of the big literature, things where that's so, the earlier work were much more of a biology of vision, for example, how people respond. The human has a black box. Equally, if you look at what I was mentioning, it's quite important. Took out, took this book, Information Visualization. Kind of threw away all the hard tech stuff and emphasized on perception. So I said talking about psychological perception, but he's deliberately trying to reach the top of the level. But if there are people from the art department, I want to make sure they have some reputation. Kandinsky on the left. How come? Because Kandinsky was the first one who, in 1970, 1970, thereabouts, actually began a catalog of everything we Started with a dot and a line and a box and a circle. If you've ever done programming before, draw a rec. You could get by coordinates for a circle. If you ever play with any kind of software in Adobe Illustrator, you notice in the um, menu, what do you see? A dot, a line, a circle. And those visual semantic primitives are still there. They were continued by Shockwave 10, particularly in 1966. And Published in 1960 on the University of Washington, uh, in Wisconsin, the different titles. The team made a big catalog. Everything visual. Kind of so big to sit and say. Some of them are too young, I certainly am. Remember the 1940 edition of American Demographic. It was the first time visualization was used in a physical setting. You think they're in the same print as yet? No, it's that machine. So it's a very curious history. Along the way, I wanted to point out a number of people. Jeff Hare, a PR, is a magnificent student. He's a great example of what happened with visualization. They made magnificent visualization to the point where they decided we don't know what to do anymore. We're no longer telling a story. We made the visualization available, and then what's that people talk about? So now we go to your scientists doing discourse analysis. That seems kind of odd. 
Maybe not. The key to doing this, we actually have a ton of psychologists in Germany, they put out a couple of books, Atlas of Science, Atlas of Knowledge, MIT. The interesting thing about these books is they're all one offs. This is a pretty picture, that's a pretty picture. There's no really engaged discussion. I'm going to have a dog. Wait. Um, no, I'm just teasing. Um, here we go. Along the way, these are my kids. Under the LA, Hunter is actually from Stanford, and she created essentially everything from scratch again. All the concepts and visualizations, she created new vocabulary, facts, and chants. That's curious because at the same time her work came out, LA, who had not been trained, came out with the same book, essentially, but using vocabulary of graphic art. And even more curious thing, these two books are essentially standard in teaching information visualization today. And I skipped over the part of the internet. I just have to show you the picture play on the line, online, and see if you can see things. Here for right. people are struggling to figure something out. Here for in LIS, CS, Computer Information Science, as well as Information Science, to cut it a little too fine. And information retrieval, there's a number of opportunities for people to play. I myself play. For example, my own work, it's not so bold. There was a beautiful information that was at the International Conference on Information Retrieval. It was trying to show that while we're pulling data together from lots of sources, there was actually an aesthetic aspect of it that goes a begging. Another paper was the aesthetic term, building a punning on Richard Rorke's a linguistic term, about the rise of the need for aesthetic education. Visualization as an information activity that Jan Mala kindly enough to publish for me in general visualization that she edited. There was another paper with Argoal on all visual retrieval. What if you didn't have a type of query? What if you were motivated by pictures? You can follow the stream behavior by the pictures. I have pretty much unbiased, hopefully unbiased view of how the mind actually works given those stimuli. Of course, there's um, Seketa, um, <laughs> Teal, and Davenport emphasized the idea of visualization across domains. And in fact, Patel and Davenport actually call data science the sexiest job of the 21st century. It's been a long time for them to actually happen. Therefore, here's a summary of this part before we move on. What are the tasks? Here's the floor. Now, this is the fact, we'd like to discover them, how do we kind of make sense? The word fact, of course, is a very pregnant word in some fields. Sense making. Examining and making sense. This is the cognitive part, it's not just nice, for example, you can't example because someone tells them they're nice, but nice because the majority of we otherwise reasonable people would conclude that this is a nice. That moves from an objectivist to a social positive point of view. That too is full of fascinating opportunities. Communication, here's the main point. The communication department, oh, it's different communication. The communication department, someone that can be able to help get the message to the world. In a variety of media. Finally, this is what's always skipped responding to needs. You can read where the local people, like our and whatnot, have a greater role. To you know what someone needs, but you can't get the test, but you have the know how, it's very frustrating, and it can be gross of some morale. So, this is the time I'm this guy talking. I'll actually give you some examples. I'll just skip that for a moment. This is just to make the point to move us along. Think about historically, information graphics were very static and very low level computation back in the day. You know, data mining, you know, really educated because it was so big and scary back in the day. The SDSS, IBM, <coughs> FAF, all these wonderful products to terrifying and learning curves like this, if it was for me. All that was then, but dynamism is a key issue of information theory. Information theory from a math perspective is really the study of state. But look at their cat chasing a mouse on the lawn. That doesn't change because it was really a graph, a blade of grass. That catches an idea, then notice just enough changes. No other mouse. That computation idea is actually in MMS. It's not what we need to work. Paint the scene, but it's being different. It's more efficient. So it's interesting to hang visual by a lot of parallel in a computer. What happens though with the DTD is the production, the computer being introduced, reaching over. So finally, scientific visualization comes along. Ah, not the data. Stuff that you could not possibly understand. Has to be expressed in large computers. One to visualize whether that's going to Mars, for example, back in the 60s. That was a significant chunk of computing power. 
I put information visualization kind of all over the place over here because, in a way, it's kind of over here is designing it. So it can range at the top in software like Tableau or Chat and other types of ABC library programming, all the way down back to a few. These three are the library. I'm not going to show you. But how can we talk to each other? So far, the premise has been you've seen the visual metaphor, you've seen the vocabulary. Why aren't they talking to each other? Well, one reason they're not talking to each other is because the vocabulary can be so precise and possibly just dismiss it as jargon. That's not necessarily a good idea. There's a reason for precision. But equally, if you try to be so precise, it never opens up. So, I can put in gray the historical vocabulary, art, graphics, history over right here. Literary theory often provides vocabulary describing. Interacting with people for resources. Librarianship, math, way into this. In fact, when Andy Van Dam is writing this giant treatise on the uh, space visualization, if you remember from Brown, it was really, really dense. Yeah, he was trying to work out math problems. And if you're very worked out, 3D geometry, give me a head. Uh, over the years, however, from the literature that looked at, the red words pop up. Math is going down here now. Business intelligence analysis must show up over here. Communication theory, thank goodness, is making its way more to the machine. Aesthetic theory, common theory, the role of the board, something happens together, something happens together. In 1997, everyone knows Ben Schneiderman, University of Maryland, great visualization guy, and Patty Mays at the MIT Media Lab. He had a great fight at the time. The time was great in fighting at the time. And then when they know we should use visualization to keep them more out of it. And famous retort was in Patty Made at MSC, she said, We are computer science, we'll tell them what they want. I think that was a good, bold statement, but I don't agree with it. Therefore, in fact, the National Institute of Justice actually held a public call for anybody in the world or in the country, not necessarily scientists, not necessarily art students, anybody, to try to use visualization to determine. Fall down the social justice. Nobody won. So they're weird. Next, position announcements. You read enough of them. I did just the other day. Everything from a reference position on up in library land now expects competency HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, which is changing dramatically, by the way. PHP, client server. You're expected to know my SQL. In other words, your toolkit is no longer merely AECR2 back in the day. Or SSH is those textbooks. Libraries may be excluded, and I use the exception example of the Joint Conference of Digital Library. We find a lot of papers there that are published with librarians and the computer science person. That's great for collaboration. Equally, it should be seen. Here's an example. I'm going to use some examples and to go crash, forgive me. I'm going to show you these examples in a moment because. They're just using a JavaScript library. Now, I don't have my diagram, but I'll show you. But imagine you have a user, or a patient, or a librarian, and you want data from the server. So the data can be brought down, and that's the link down, come to a JSON file, just the moment doing some array. And in just you, the librarian, said, This is the design I think makes sense for the audience for the question. Just send me those data. Because Everything else will be here. It's actually in your tent, in your building. Why don't you try it? Why don't you play around with it? Look at it. There were data on state library serial use. So let me try to bring up that page. Then I would get worried. <laughs> okay. This looks like someone had to make it. That was very static, doesn't it? But the fact of the matter is, there is data in here. I'll show you in a moment. Those can come down from the server into a site file, and they get it sucked in very easily. For example, what question does this diagram answer? If nothing else, we notice how we got different signs. That tells you something different. Something on the left, the real time dot says something is not much use, and notice over the years, there's more use. But look at Richmond down below. Without the Richmond, it's probably pretty consistent. No problem. Nothing. No problem. There it is. 
Maybe something was happening, a program over here. To the effectiveness of it. So when I mouse over, I see what Charles Town took one year. Now this is how this is not meant to be a whiz bang graphic, it isn't. It's just meant to show I can do that. So you can imagine talking to the librarian's office of state and saying, please give me data about circulation use as I get my plan. And they send you this JSON file, you plug it in, ta-da. Which I think is kind of fun. What if you weren't what if that weren't the right diagram? What if somebody here were the break? I'll give it again. This is the literature thing I'm working on with Matthew the Sent on Book to show how we could combine businesses and library and cultural institutions. So that if you want to look for transcendentalism as a tourist, you can see all the house museums and cemeteries and where to go. Send you the NSDG files and the JSON files. Easily to pop that up Rhode Island. So if you want to go to, everyone goes to Newport, they all go to Central Falls. If you want them to go to Foster, they want to emphasize that. The advantage here is you're talking with differences in that, in that data model. So let me show this tree of historic Rhode Island. Imagine a student here looking for historical things. Since the archive is just down the hall, I thought I'd use this nice historical map of counties that we don't have anymore. But it kind of makes sense given that division. So imagine this was the interface for a search. And you know this problem, what's happening up there in the big P? I think this list of export was four people. This is actually from the list of problems of GoProblems.com. Now, what do you see what's happening at Brown? At Discovery. Lots of Brown and Yale associates. I wouldn't know any of that very. What are the historical personages? Well, kind of visually, it's not really the best example, but John Brown and Moses Brown, you can help him to some situate. I don't know if you got the right situate. John Gano, I just know Gano from the street. What if you want to look at Bristol? Everyone knows the 4th of July parade, the longest one in the country. We know that, but somebody else might not. Historic cemeteries. Because the state, as you know, maintains a list of historical cemeteries. Maintain the North Burial. This is a number of the year. You can be reflective of data by having all the data. Now, my design is getting pretty messy. It's a cognitive issue. Let's get rid of Providence. Yay. Now we've reduced that data set. You know, something more useful. Now, if you really wanted, if I had more time last night, I would have made it a link. So we can click here and go to an image or some other data. So map and it's easy again. The next one that I want to show you, this idea of participatory computing. I'll be quick because I'm almost done. I believe that all these resources go begging. They were talking about participation. So from an IR information retrieval point of view, how can you participate? I don't have a diagram to show you, but typically you think of a document collection. So these are materials from Boston Public Library that go with begging. People on the ground say, I don't have that old stuff. No. What can you do? Well, what if you could have 10,000 records of that test from great collections if you have the kind of theory? This one, uploading, just create a main tracing for yourself, like Boston Maps, for example, something. So, the files are extracted, thumbnails are created automatically, color profile, the RGB color profile is extracted, VRA record created, valid uh, VRA record, the data goes into a relation to the database, gives work uh, collection, image association, all built in, perform the standards. Ready to go. Ta -da. And the reason is that ta -da is because you can do that in there. What else can we do with it? That means if I select those data, why can I search for those data? Here are examples. I just dump the data in. Goodbye. Any questions? It's like five minutes dating. People are leaving. Um, these are all thrown in there, and I had to get rid of many of the collections because I actually filled the server. I know from the administrators, I knew 90% of the server, your materials, have to be down. 
I haven't put it back up yet. But what we will see very soon is the API and the direction about how we can do the USL um, integrate into your own situation. I don't use PHP, use Magic, MySQL, all open source materials. Now, the idea too is if you annotate, and I'll be very quick, I'll just grab a guy here. You can search, you can build collections, you can build collections, create a PDF of a book on the fly automatically. You can search by color profile. If you're a VRA, you can update the record, but if you're just an end user, you can add expert data about the record. So now you have full text retrieval opportunity with both a service and your research platform. Now, what if you created an information visualization which you really liked? You don't want it to go away. You can actually add it to the main screen. Almost done. Well, I'm on the screen. There's a way for you to add it to the collection. Now your work is lost, and you can test it. This is an example of combining everything, which I think is not a bad idea. Almost done. Here we go. Summary and conclusions. One, the volume of data and computer science and it all to the nature of people's work. That makes clear. Everybody is interested in visualization. Um, but we need an authoritative voice, something that can integrate all of these features. And that, I think, really is the role of LIS. Change in identity. What happens when your work changes? Many people think, if my records are changed, I'll lose my data. That's not true. That's an opportunity for education. I can use the data differently and be used to add value for the client and be on the job. This is a diagram to show that everybody has room in the stakeholder system and just about done. Many people deal with digitization by well, let's see the capturing creating requirement kind of standards, then the digital can get things analyzed. A lot of pressure in management to do that. Right management is very important to think in the digital environment. Search, balance, discovery, and sharing, you still put the dissemination of libraries and education all the time. Who's in the middle? You do all the fun stuff, you still have to have a well, visualization, refine services, and management. You still need the computer folks to fail and to convert. So, in the ecology, with everybody, so I conclude by saying, here is an example integrating the other metaphor earlier into this diagram. Bidirectional with a definite leaning around the circle. And how did that impact us? There we go. New model of searching. That means information discovery processes could be kind of here. Why don't you get it and extract some sets? You already know it's well and regression analysis and other techniques. And if you're done, look at the concepts, you can visualize local needs. Um, get the idea. Interactive visualization is also made and for audiences. But don't just think in terms of information library. Think of it as everything. So in a small state, that we need to do more with less. You can partner with businesses, with your town. There's no reason why you can preserve the dignity of a historical collection and you get the library and that's the school get involved. And I really am a big believer in data dictionary, enterprise wide data models, and it's in the reserve of data views and other restrictions, obviously. But if you know what you have, you know what you can build, think about it. The only answer from a technologist should be yes, not no. Now let's find the money for it, but that's another story. Therefore, here's my sales pitch. And I'm almost done. It's a benefit for all. For detection, to fund cultural tourism, encourages participation, nonlinear, nonclosed. For everybody, and it necessarily impacts work. You can read this if you'd like. Therefore, I'm happy to answer questions, and I'm really hoping my friend who drove me here today will bring me for an off law. God's gift to the world. Thank you. In 59 minutes. So. <laughs>
is a great example of a live factor. And I'll tip my hand by saying I don't like postmodernism. Because the idea of a preferred interpretation, I'm making it or not. So the idea of a preferred interpretation, anathema to the father of all our or issues of power control, which was quite true earlier on. But fortunately, it's a debate that was asked for with people like Hoyer Auden and the Fifth Year Science of Berkeley and uh, Danny Fish with his uh, reader response theory while trying to open up the discourse and just getting to too much hyper relativism and throw away the concept of truth with the capital C. In a post postmodernist world, however, the return of truthfulness has come back. And a good example of this is Simon Greenberg in his book Truth. To, to his book, I call Truth, the counter would be Lynch's Truth in Context, that was a hyper confused, hyper relativism. But a great example given by Bertrand, Baker, and Stronson in their book Truth, Why It Matter. They use the example of a Bengali woman belonging to a Bengali woman who wrote a play about what it's like to be a Bengali woman who made money. And I was put on in Manchester. City Council was petitioned by so called Bengali elders to prevent the play from happening. So the council debated is it a free speech question, she has the right to say what she thinks, or is it a community response in this question, and we shut it down. We shut it down. So she went back. How few words answered the idea of evidence as his last book. Evidence, term evidence, but has forensic value, but it also means to have a lean on the concept of truthfulness and it needs to have a concept of a trail of evidence that would lead other rational people to that same conclusion. So Tufty is a mouse of uh, side enough to talk about. I'm a very practical person. So, uh, my question is, have you done big visualizations to solve data? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I think what kind of languages are uh, you have? Uh, you like to look at that? Uh, have you tried a particular application? Oh, yes, of course. All the D3 library, D3 JavaScript library that we can class, I'll be JSON or a CSV file that we can pull down. I have, we have a full section of the thing you use to the query in, that it should be a book where you pull down the stack of the I've written down a um, JSON file on there. And then we just use elementary PhD community project and bring in the header, bring in the JSON file, and the D3 library has a part of the JSON file and bring in a multi simple array, even if you so that's pretty good. Tableau requires more overhead than we have, so we keep staying where I am right now. Um, can't afford SAS or it's just up. But in the other class, we get into our ability. We bring in F12 flat files, JSON files, uh, XML files, and there we play with them with JavaScript, science side, PHP, and Python. Um, and I use, I like Java. And I'll use them. I like Java tech libraries. So I use Java for that. Um, so the idea of that sense is to say heterogeneous data sets and express in different languages for different visualizations. But on the high stuff of visualization, we can be free.
Oh, oh, 